Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what are my favorite theorems, a very biased collection as usual. Um, today I would like to generalize a very, very famous theorem. You will see what it is. And it's about coloring of graphs. And um, well, maybe it's more a conjecture in the end than really a theorem. There will be some special cases which are already quite interesting and they're on the theorems, but in general, it's just a conjecture. And it's sometimes called one of the main open conjectures in graph theory. So let's have a look. So the well, conjecture theorem I would like to generalize, or this conjecture generalizes, um, is the famous four color suffice theorem. So uh, the four color theorem says that any map, here's a map, can be colored with at most four colors. So instead of writing with at most all the time, I just say with four colors. Sometimes you don't need four, you just can go with two or whatever. Uh, if you have one vertex, you can go with one color. So coloring, remember here in this case, means that if I have some area here, then all adjacent areas, so this one, oh God, uh, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one, they should all get different colors, right? So um, a good question is then how many colors suffice? Obviously, <laughs> the upper bound is just given by the number of uh, well uh, faces here. So if you have 1 million faces, then coloring everything in its own color will be good. So neighboring, obviously neighboring countries and obviously don't get the same color because everything has its own color. But it's a little bit boring. So you kind of want to find the minimal number. Um, and for, for this uh, for color theorem, it's really just any map can be colored with four colors. So here in this example, there are only four colors. Is this greenish here? blue, I think this should be yellow, and this is kind of orange. And that's true in general. And this conjecture, that's kind of cool part of math history, was conjectured quite a while ago. And this had many, many row proofs. So it is true, but it had many, many row proofs. And um, it was conjectured while someone tried to color the counties of England, and England has zillion of counties, and well, then realized, oh, uh, four colors suffice, maybe that's general, and then there's this famous letter here, and you can actually already see, so this is quite a while ago, right? You can already see relatively modern notation here, uh, very, very similar to, to this picture here on the right left, actually. Yeah. So four colors suffice, and kind of the main example is that also is drawn here in just a slightly distorted fashion is when they have one county in the middle, and then you can have three around, so you need in this case, we need four colors. So the middle one gets green, for example, then blue. Uh, what is another color? Red. Uh, orange is a good color. So we definitely need four colors in this case. And the conjecture is that that's it. You never need five. Uh, so you maybe you would like to try it yourself. You play around with it a little bit. Um, as I said, you might convince yourself that it's true and try to write down a proof. So several people have written down wrong proofs. Uh, not to point fingers here. It's just it's just really a complicated statement to prove, actually. Surprisingly simple. It's a very simple statement, right? Every map has can be four colored, but it's really, really hard to prove. And the proof is a computer-based proof that uh, followed quite a while later, let's say 120 years, and is really one of the main achievements in graph theory altogether. So the four color theorem is certainly one of the most uh, important theorems in graph theory and maybe even in mathematics. And not because it's of a theoretical implication or something, but because it's so easy to formulate and it took so long for, to find a proof and the proof needs computer help as far as we are concerned here still in 2022, um, which, well, nowadays, probably for most mathematicians, that's fine, but it was a huge thing in the 1970s. Kind of mathematicians don't trust the computers in the 1970s. I don't know really why. I would rather trust a computer than uh, myself trying to do it. But anyway, uh, it's still in the status that without computer, there is no proof. Anyway, so this is one of the most important theorems, as I said, in graph theory. And that's what we want to generalize. And yeah, so this is very hard to prove. Let's see what we can say about the generalization. But first, let's define the generalization. OK, so how can we uh, generalize this, right? We have a map. So what is the generalization of a map? Should we look at different surfaces, maybe? Well, that's not what I want to do. I would like to have an abstract property of being a map. And being a map is kind of the same as being a graph. Uh, I just put here my vertices, and I connect 
neighboring, um, maybe I use a different color, neighboring uh, countries by an edge. So this whole beast here is some graph, right? And the formal statement is then that any planar graph, any graph embedded in the plane has four colors. I don't really know how to generalize planar. Okay, we could put it on a surface or something, but that's not what I want to do. So here's a different generalization of being planar, which doesn't refer to any embedding or something. Um, and this works as follows. There is a very famous theorem, which is called Wagner theorem. And it says that the graph is planar if and only if another condition holds. And what I will generalize is, or what this conjecture generalizes, is the other condition, right? So instead of focusing on how to generalize planar, we generalize the equivalent condition, which is somehow much easier. And it works as follows. It's planar if and only if your graph has no K33. So this is K33. There are three vertices here, three vertices here, and everything on the left is connected to everything on the right, but no connections in, on the left and no connections on the right. This is K33, the complete graph, uh, a complete bipartite graph on uh, six vertices. And this is K5, the complete graph on five vertices. It just has five vertices and everything is connected. No, that's it. So K is complete in the sense that everything is connected. And the 3-3 three, three just says you, you have two uh, with a left side and a right side. And you have connections between left and right, but not within left and right. OK, and the Wagner approach is now um, that any graph, whenever you see one of them as a minor, you're dead. Then it's not planar. And that's an if and only if. And the minor is a very, very weak condition, actually. So here is a graph. And this is a minor of the graph. So in the minor, you are allowed to erase edges. You are allowed to erase vertices. So I get rid of all these dotted edges and the red vertex here. And I can still co co contract verti uh, edges. So I can also contract this edge here. And this becomes then the, these two vertices here that become this new middle vertex. So we are allowed to erase vertices, erase edges, and contract edges. And whatever comes out of those operations is called a minor. So, and a very, very weak, somehow very, very weak sounding condition, but it's very important in graph theory in, in general. And then the statement is just, whatever this operation spits out, you're not allowed to see a K33 or a K5, okay? And then we can reformulate the four color theorem, at least with a short question mark here, a little question mark here. So a graph with at most a K4 minor is four color ever, okay? So the biggest minor you see is the K4, and then you know that four colors suffice. Uh, let's have a look at the K5 here, because everything is clearly connected in order to color it. You would need to put different colors at each vertex. So your orange, black, blue, whatever, green, and you have another color here. Okay, so you really need all five colors. And kind of the generalization is that's kind of but that's it, it's if as long as you look at minors, right? So let me say it again. Uh, a planar graph needs at most four colors. Replace planar with it has at most a K5 minor and then a uh, K4 minor. And then the new formulation of the four color theorem is a graph with at most a K4 minor is four color album. And now I'm not referring to any planarity at all anymore. Okay, now that's my different perspective, not my, of course, but the different perspective here on the four color theorem. And you might wonder where's actually K33? Well, it turns out that for the coloring problem, this is completely boring because it's bipartite. I can color it uh, red and blue, for example, so it only ever needs two colors, no matter how big it gets. And well, this is kind of boring anyway. So it doesn't really play a role for colorability. It plays a role for planarity, but not for colorability. And the main point is exactly this one here. Um, so you look at the biggest minor, so the biggest K T minor, and then it should be T colorable. And that's exactly then the conjecture, which by now is quite old. As you can see, and still open. Um, so there's a stupid condition on being loopless, but <laughs> let's ignore that. And we have no KT minor, then its chromatic number is smaller than T. And that's just a different formulation about colorability. So um, that's exactly the statement here, um, this one here, just uh, using this, the notion of a chromatic number. So really the same. You look for the biggest minor that you find, the biggest KT, and that should be the maximum number of colorings you need. Um, the case T equals five is exactly the four color theorem. So no K5 minor, which was a reformulation, as I said, is at most a K4 minor, right? 
um, is the Volcata theorem. So it's true. And the theorem, which was proven actually much later on, quite recently, if you want, is a t equals six case. It's also true. And beyond that, we just don't know. So here are two theorems, which are actually pretty cool. So the Volcata theorem obviously is a cool theorem. And here the t equals six version of the Volcata theorem, if you want. Um, kind of generalizing it, looking at those minors of complete graphs. Um, so also it's open for higher T, um, but you still can prove that it's almost always true anyway. So that's kind of a different statement. You have different uh, ways to attack such a question. And yeah, here you go. Uh, those people proved that the, the, the conjecture, so it's, it's by the way called Hedwig's conjecture, it's true for almost every graph. Okay, so we know it's true for five, for, for lower numbers, it's kind of easy. For five, for six, it's uh, true for bigger than six in almost all cases, but we don't know the general statement, right? So three theorems, um, and they're kind of all of the same flavor, but still the general statement is missing. I personally wouldn't try to attack it, so it's it's known or it's called the most important theorem, uh, open conjecture in graph theory. So it's probably not very easy to prove anyway. Okay, before I stop, let me mention that this is not an if and only if condition. So um, usually it's just an upper bound for the number of colors. For example, here's a Peterson graph clearly has a K5 minor. So the Peterson graph is this graph here. And if I contract along those edges, along the five edges connecting inside and outside, I definitely get a K5. So K5 is a minor, but you only need three colors. So the bound need not to be sharp, right? It's exactly the same as saying uh, a map can be colored also with three colors. So if I only have uh, two, three countries, one, two, three, very square looking countries, but anyway, then you can, I can, I can color one blue, uh, maybe not, another blue is not a good color. I can color one uh, black and purple, and clearly I don't need four colors, right? And it's the same here. Just because I have a K5 minor doesn't mean I need five colors. Uh, it just means the conjecture at least says I need at most five colors. Okay, so um, let me wrap up. So the conjecture generalizes a famous and hopefully a theorem you like, the four color theorem, in a kind of a cute way, right? So it's not completely obvious how you should generalize the four color theorem because there's this planarity condition involved, but you kind of use this uh, Wagner theorem to, to kind of get a new statement for involving minus and complete graphs. And it's then exactly the same conjecture and proven in certain special cases. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and also hope to see you next time.